youtubers so today in this video we are going to learn how to design a flamethrower kit for any motorcycle or a car uh, as i'm showing you the block diagram of an example like uh, we are installing this uh, on a motorcycle but the same uh, procedure applies for any car as well so first of all i'm going to go through the components that we require to complete this project uh, first of all the uh, M4 muffler. The reason why I'm showing you an M4 muffler is because for this project you should have a free flow exhaust system in your motorcycle. The reason is uh, if you have any DB killer or a catalytic converter, that means this project might not work for you. So from now on, I'm considering that you have a free flow exhaust in your motorcycle. So the next thing we need to have is a spark plug with long threadings. I will explain it to you why we need long threadings. Then we should have a coil. Uh, the coil can be uh, like uh, a motorcycle coil or a car coil, right? Then we should design a triple five timer circuit. Uh, I'm going to focus more on this triple five timer circuit because uh, this is the brain of the circuit. Finally, we should have two relays of 12 volts and a simple uh, switch, push switch. The last uh, um, things that is the coil and the motorcycle serial pulsar wire block is uh, by default already in your motorcycle. So first of all, we are going to discuss what happens normally when you are riding, right? Uh, you are riding and the motorcycle serial pulsar is giving pulses to the uh, ignition coil which is producing high voltage that is fed to the uh, engine through the spark plug what we want here is we want to break the connection between the coil and the motorcycle CDI or the pulsar wire right so obviously if you are breaking the connection that means uh, if the pulsar or the CDI is not providing pulses to this coil uh, so the coil is not going to produce any high voltages and the uh, if we don't have any high voltages at the spark plug then they, that means no ignition so we we are going to break the connection by inserting a relay like i have shown you uh, but uh, you should connect the relay in the default position by the default position i means that uh, we are not providing any voltage at the coil side and still we should uh, just get the pulses from the CDI or pulsar to the coil as you can see in this diagram right so obviously if you are going to provide any voltage like 12 volts uh, to this coil uh, just see my cursor so the switch is going to move from the, its default position to the uh, shift position or the second position and uh, the connection is going to break so the second coil as you can see it is uh, not connected as uh, we have connected the first coil right here so let's uh, go to the procedure that, that uh, when we are going to press the switch and what is going to happen suppose you are riding and suddenly you want the exhaust to produce flames right so in order to do that we have to push the switch that i have shown you right here in this diagram when you're going to push the switch five, uh, 12 volts uh, supply from the battery is going to move to the first relay as well as to the second relay so the first relay when you push the switch the 12 volts will move to this relay it will be activated and it is going to break the connection between the default coil and the motorcycle CDI repulsor. So it means when you press the switch, there will be no ignition in the ignition chamber or the engine chamber. At the same time, that same 12 volts is going to move to your second relay and it is going to activate this relay as well when this uh, relay is activated that 12 volt will also move to the uh, triple five timer circuit as you can see 
if you if you just uh, follow the red lines right so pressing the switch activates the first relay disconnects the motorcycle coil from the cdi and activates the second relay provides 12 volts to the triple five timer circuit since triple five timer circuit is providing high frequency pulses to this coil that means that uh, this uh, coil is going to produce high voltage and it will be fed to the uh, spark plug that we have installed uh, into this uh, amp 4 muffler so as we have disconnected the connection between motorcycle coil and the cdi that means that all the uh, fuel mixture that is coming into the ignition chamber will not be burned at that moment and it will pass it will be passed through that chamber into the exhaust and it will reach at the end of your exhaust system that is the muffler and since uh, we are igniting another uh, uh, spark plug at the same time so obviously it is going to burn that fuel right at the end of the exhaust where we want it and it will show us flames uh, coming out from the exhaust right so uh, the second thing I want to mention here is uh, why we need uh, spark plug with long threads the method we uh, have to implement here is uh, um, M4 muffler for example we are using the M4 muffler okay so what you need to do is uh, drill a hole at the end of that muffler and install this uh, spark plug that is put it through that uh, hole the tip of the uh, spark plug that is the second end where the spark is actually you are looking at the spark right so the tip of the spark plug should be right at the center of your exhaust muffler because uh, it will it is going to give you the best uh, results from this project so I hope that uh, first you have understood the complete procedure that how this uh, diagram and this project is working right next we are going to move to the triple five timer circuit here and I'll, and I will explain you briefly about the circuit that uh, how you're going to design the circuit and how the circuit works so why we are calling this this circuit as any triple five timer circuit because the the IC we are going to use here is NE555 and this is the brain of this uh, circuit. So as you can see it is uh, placed right at the center of the diagram. And uh, next two important parts are the, the capacitor that is 0.1 microfarad and this resistor that is variable resistor VR1 which is of value 100 kilo ohms. The resistor, variable resistor and the capacitor combined are known as tank circuit. They produce oscillations and these oscillations are actually used by this triple five timer circuit uh, to produce constant out DC output pulses which we are receiving at pin 3. And that uh, uh, pulsating DC is provided to the IRF740 MOSFET. Since we have uh, low current um, output from this NE555 we have to add a IRF740 uh, MOSFET right, uh, at this spot so that uh, the coil uh, should be uh, should produce high voltages at the output side the rest of the components like the diodes and the resistors they are just the components that is required to activate this 555 timer circuit so uh, Next thing I'm going to show you is uh, the how to design the circuit uh, and let's just move to that part okay so as we know that uh, we are going to design today uh, a triple five timer circuit and its output will be pulsating DC so uh, in today's video we are going to use the circuit as a um, driver circuit for ignition coil so I have all the components with me right here and uh, uh, rest of the circuit uh, components I have placed uh, at uh, uh, away from the camera focus so that I can just show you the components uh, that I'm going to use one by one right 
but one thing that I'm going to mention here is uh, uh, if you are going to use uh, such Vero boards so they come in different variety uh, like uh, uh, in this uh, if you if you can see clearly here uh, these patches are short like horizontally right and uh, the one I'm going to use today is uh, you can see it's uh, these patches are shorted uh, vertically and we have some patches like the center ones and the extreme end patches which are uh, shorted horizontally so uh, we are going to use the extreme uh, patches for positive and negative and the rest are, will be used for connecting uh, different components here uh, you can also uh, use uh, uh, one kind of ferro board which will uh, have uh, dot patches so um, i don't have that one right now with me so i am going to use uh, this one right here and let's get started okay so as you can see that the circuit is finally completed here uh, I have uh, rechecked the circuit so that if there is any short between the components uh, it should be removed right so I recommend you that if even you are going to design the circuit you have to recheck the circuit at least twice so that if there is any short between any component wires so you should just uh, remove them right and uh, I have also uh, placed the triple uh, five timer IC on this one, and the LED is going to indicate as this this circuit is right now turned on. Okay, I have connected the uh, uh, motorcycle coil right here. Let me show you this one. Uh, this is uh, an old motorcycle coil, uh, which is going to uh, create the high voltages. Uh, so that we can see that high voltage uh, at the at this spot right uh, near this part plug and finally i have con uh, connected everything mm, you can see the uh, connections in the circuit diagram that uh, i have already showed you so let's just uh, run the circuit and see what is going to happen okay so as you can see at this spot, uh, we have high voltages and the uh, LED is also glowing, right? Yes. So, I have set this uh, spark right here uh, for a very high frequency. I can vary the frequency by simply uh, turning this uh, 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 variable resistor. So if I just move it anti-clockwise, then we are going to see how will be the sparks, right? So let me connect the circuit. Okay, something is wrong here. I think I have turned the variable resistor too far away. So let me bring it back a little bit clockwise and let's see again yes now you can see that the spark we have a low frequency spark you can simply uh, verify it from the noise right it's a low frequency spark and if i just move it back to uh, fully clockwise direction Uh, also 
while testing the circuit be very careful that uh, these wires should be far away from this area otherwise uh, the high voltage may go through any of the voltage uh, back to the circuit and definitely it is going to blow up the circuit so let's give it a final shot so now you can see that uh, it is again at the high frequency so uh, uh, you can see that the circuit is completed right here. We have connected the driver. Uh, yes, this is the driver circuit and we have con connected the application uh, with this circuit, right? Since this application is for purely uh, flamethrower for any motorcycle or any car. So um, all you have to do is connect this uh, spark plug, place this spark plug near the end of your exhaust and it should definitely be a free flow exhaust if you have any uh, muffler which contains any db killer so uh, you might probably just uh, not uh, get the fine results that you are expecting right from this circuit so uh, one last thing is uh, also be careful while uh, uh, running this circuit not to uh, bring bring your finger close to this uh, spark plug otherwise you are going to get a very high voltage shock right so that's all uh, with this circuit let's move back to the uh, desktop and uh, uh, I'm going to tell you some more things about this circuit okay some important points at the end that is uh, uh, suppose you have installed this uh, project and uh, still you are not getting any flames uh, through the exhaust right so what can be uh, the possible problems that need to be resolved first of all uh, while riding as soon as you press the switch you have to pull the throttle at its maximum position that is fully anti-clockwise because by that you are actually allowing the maximum amount of unburned air fuel mixture to reach at the tip of the exhaust side right? so that it can be burned by the spark plug that we have installed at the um, muffler in the muffler and also uh, the second thing is uh, if you have tried uh, this thing and still you are not getting any flames at all or you are getting flames but not good flames then it might be possible that you are running a lean mixture so in order to get uh, good flames you have to enrich that mixture a little bit by simply uh, rotating the fuel mixture screw anti-clockwise and just uh, like a quarter turn or a half turn depending on how much flame you actually need but uh, be careful that uh, if you are enriching your system too much then uh, it might cause uh, uh, while riding your motorcycle so as i mentioned quarter turns or a half turn would be enough for this project right so uh, do try this project once because i have already done this project on my uh, suzuki gs150 and it works great it is fun while riding and just pressing the switch you see a lot of flames and do watch the video of uh, uh, how the flames uh, was coming out from my motorcycle. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Take care, have fun and bye bye.